All right, welcome to Dean Bodie Show. Da -da 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 -da. Dean Bodie Show. Hey everybody, what's up? Happy Saturday. Man, oh man, one more week until the Super Bowl. And just giving you a little heads up in advance. But before we get into all of that stuff, who's the good girl? Good girl Bodie, good, good girl, good girl Bodie. She's the best girl in the world. Oh yeah. DeanBody.com, 800-878-9698, Bodie Hotline, Bodie Funline, call the Bodie Line, say something nice to Bodie, she is waiting for you, and uh, we'll make it a feature on the show, hey, your first name, where you're from, a little zippity doo -dah, do a little sing-along, a little pun, a little joke, a little riddle, a little short story, something that's going on with your life that might be scratching you, and you have to itch it, we'll itch it with you, how's that sound? DeanBody.com is the website again, and the links are on there. One will get you over to the podcast, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, and the social link will get you over to the YouTube channel, D-E-A-N-B-O-D-I Space Show YouTube channel. Hey, look, when I sing the, the Bodhi song, a good girl, Bodhi, good, good girl song, I'm holding up her picture. You got to come over to the YouTube channel to see Bodhi. Bodhi is in charge. Bodhi's running this show. Let me tell you something, man. We got so much going on over here, you wouldn't believe. We got, from old business, some money was found. That's a good thing. <laughs> we got, going back like 10 years, we're talking about. It's crazy. Uh, investigators, uh, attorney law firms finding this, finding that. And uh, man, uh, when that happens, it's always good, whatever the amount is. But... Hey, it's a nice little uh, weekend surprise, and, uh, you know, it's going to go towards some good stuff. So, listen, other than that, oh, we went through something crazy, like <clears throat> having to go through a deposition. You know, when you get somebody uh, and you're involved in, like, a lawsuit, uh, even though it's not your company, but they want to ask you questions, and you got to, and there's, like, no way to get out of it. It's so ridiculously annoying. So the one thing that was good, and it was, it's all Zoom now. You don't have to get and go down to a place. And so that was good. But man, the attorney was just, they get into your life. They get personal. They start asking you stuff you don't want to talk about that has nothing to do with the suit itself. Zero. They just want to start poking into your life and do this and try to make you something that you're not or dig something up from the past and find out if you're telling the truth about this or that. It's like, you know, <clears throat> ex-wife this, ex-wife that. It, like you, I, I'm telling them I'm divorced. Are you really divorced? Was it done in a court? Where'd you get it done? Where's she living now? This and that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Getting a little choked up here talking about all this stuff. And when it was all said and done... And the funny part is, during one of the things, when a couple of us were talking at the same time, the Zoom kind of freaked out a little bit. So somebody got blocked out, then we had to go back in, and the moderator was like, uh, or the arbitrator, whatever he's called, some kind of innator at the end. <laughs> he's like, try not to go uh, or ooh, or huh, while someone else is talking, because it kind of throws off the, oh, okay. Welcome to the new age of Zoom meetings, everything. But we got it figured out. But then when we came back from the kibosh, the the attorney that's going off on a crazy tangent and all these other things, he goes, I forgot what the question that I was asking. And then he goes, it must be my age getting there. So the lawyer that's representing my side <laughs> tried to say the question that he said and I had to tell him no that wasn't it I'm the one who had to remind him of the question this is what you said and this is what it was and then the, the attorney goes oh yeah that was it so I answered it and I'm like you know Alzheimer's is creeping up on this guy. Secondly, if you got to get reminded by somebody who you're trying to grill about a question you need to ask, maybe it's time to hang it up. It seems like this guy is just going, throwing the ball as far as he can. And, you know, they need billable hours. 
and they need all this stuff. One way or the other, someone's paying for attorney fees. Anyway, not to get into it too heavy, but it's been like a big kind of topsy-turvy kind of week. I hope your week is going well. And, you know, we're doing our thing over here. Now, the ketosis thing that we're doing, the keto diet. Last night, I gave myself a cheat meal. And first of all, I'm starving. Okay. Second of all, my energy is horrible. It, or it has been really horrible like you wouldn't believe. So I said, you know, it's been forever since I had some pasta. I used to make great rigatoni and meat sauce. And so I had some ground up. This is a little bit different. Maybe not for everybody, but I had some organic uh, marinara sauce that I got. I, a jar of that. Ground up chicken, not ground up beef. And I grounded up the ground up chicken with the tomato sauce, with all kinds of spices I put in there. No sugar, nothing like that going on. Just plain Jane and regular seasoning, you know, salt, pepper, some herbs and stuff like that. And that was it. The rigatoni, um, got the organic pasta. And I said, let me make some. When I was eating that, it tasted so delicious. I was like, man. But then I wanted to see what the next day reading was going to be with my blow meter with the acetones and the ketones. And it took me right out of ketosis. So I know that the machine's working. Oh, I didn't check the blood, but anyway, sometimes I do both or one or the other. And they're both, they usually agree with one another pretty much. But it kicked me out. So it said it was low. And then the machine comes up. It gives you like a, a little thing that you can read to a, um, on depending where you land. It said, uh, you're kind of in, um, what do you call it, mode. Uh, with just a, you just got a two. You're bumped out of ketosis. And you might want to back, back off on some carbs. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I just, <laughs> I just had a whole thing of pasta. And it's almost like, is somebody, is there a little man or a little woman in that machine that crawls out and peeks and watches what I'm doing? <laughs> you know, it was kind of funny how it was telling me something I already knew. And it like, like it knew what I, it, it knew what I did. <laughs> okay? You can't get away with nothing, but it's nice to know where you're at and what kicks you out. Then we got right back on track this morning uh, we had uh, the vegan style bulletproof coffee with the collagen chocolate protein. So it's kind of like this hot chocolate coffee. Really good. And I did an extra scoop of the collagen protein today. Um, I did the coffee, of course, a couple tablespoons of the MCT oil, a little pinch of pink Himalayan salt, put that in a blender after I made the coffee and whipped it up without the butter or the dairy, none. So we did that, we did the next meal. Um, I did one of these super fat snacks that I have. Now this is not fat snacks, the cookies with the butter and all that. We had the 86 those, except for the peanut butter ones I saved because the boats, they're like some. And it's good for her, she's getting some MCT, she's getting some good stuff. Uh, for her body to get her brain functioning on all 10 cylinders because she's so smart. She needs it. So that's kind of cool that she's doing those as a treat, but a healthy one. Better than some of the, a lot better than some of the treats, the doggy treats by far. Secondly, um, the fat snacks are, that are made with the butter and all that that I'm not doing anymore because of my butter, my dairy allergy from what I remember I had from years ago, even though it was slight, we don't need that allergic inflammatory response. Booyah, not good. So that being said, I have another thing called super fat that I was trying and I kind of left it on the shelf, but it's these little squeeze pouches and it's got one of them's got uh, some coffee in it. The other one doesn't have coffee. It's got peanut butter, I think, um, the MCT oil. Everything but 
dairy, all keto friendly, no dairy, no butter in them. So I started doing those and not having a problem there. So those might be a little bit of a go-to. So obviously when you're baking some cookies, like the keto snacks or the crackers that they have, a little butter in those and I get it for flavor, for mouthfeel, for yumminess, when you're talking about some baked goods. The squeezy pouch with the super fat, <laughs> I love the names, you gotta love them. Doesn't need the dairy because it's just squeezing up in your mouth. It's a what? It's a squeezing up in your mouth. And you don't need the dairy in that because it's not a baked good, but it's just a squeeze and uh, or whatever. And let me tell you something. I did the one with the coffee today. Not only is are they yummy, okay? But the energy in my brain boost today was up, man. It was up there. When I took Bodhi for a walk, I did this group call that I do, a health, kind of a health, little health talk. And, um, excuse me, just smacked my microphone in the old Sasuka. That's why you have the shock mount to handle the absorption and all of that. Fancy schmancy over here. Um, and... Um, saw a neighbor, talked to them, did the group call, this and that, checked the mail, and my energy and my mental clarity was way up. This is good. So, you know, throwing in the, um, the carbohydrate for, as a treat, I wanted to see what would happen. I think it's done my body some good, actually. That's not the, probably the greatest carb I could have chosen, but I did choose the organic aisle, Okay, so that's good, meaning it's a better quality where there's not a, all these pesticides and all this other stuff and they, it's more dialed in when you go organic. So, you know, and it was nice having that. And I remember back in the day when I was doing the bodybuilding style of eating, this is not, you're going between two and three hours up to one hour before bed kind of thing. And you're getting, at minimum, you're getting minimum five meals. But I would go six, seven it would hit eight sometimes. I've done 10. Uh, depending on how early you start, uh, you can get it done if you're going every two hours or even every hour and a half. And these are real small portions. But, um, you know, the carb choices, I remember back in the day, um, you do the oatmeal in the morning and you probably put a little bit of, uh, what would I put in there? I would put some cinnamon in there. I'd throw some, maybe a few almonds and walnuts and some berries, cut up a strawberry or throw a few blueberries in there. Uh, and the oats is a grain, not the greatest choice. I mean, the other choices you can do is like a cream of buckwheat, which is low glycemic. You can go the quinoa route, low glycemic. But as long as you're doing the other one in moderation with the starchies, you just got to go moderate, I think. Like a white potato, moderate. You can do sweet potato instead. Um, the white rice or the jasmine rice, you know, and there's the brown rice choice and, you know, um, that kind of thing. And just kind of mix it in and shuffle it around. And the rest of it, do cruciferous carbs, the veggies and all of that. And the quinoa falls into the plant-based and the cream of buckwheat falls into the plant-based also. So you shuffle these things around and don't make it such a staple, I think is better. I think it's a good thing. Not too many days in a row of something, whatever. So um, I had some beef uh, yesterday. I had some beef today, um, organic, good quality stuff. And so far, we're doing okay. Uh, you know, I don't want to do like five meals a day of the high purine because of my gout flare-ups and all. But I'm trying to find out because when I, when I tied in the dairy thing, is it being a problem, right? And I know that inflammatory response, if you have an allergy, allergic reaction, that's different than just, um, that's just, that's different than just, what am I trying to say? Uh, an inflammatory uh, response. An allergic reaction is another level, okay? So I'm paying attention to that dairy thing, all right? So I've taken that away. So now we got to see what's going on with this purine thing when it comes to gout. 
There's a lot of people saying a lot of stuff out there, doctors on YouTube saying this and that. I think getting a little loosey-goosey with what they're saying because they're not gout sufferers themselves. That's, that's a big difference there. So, and the keto, getting worse for it gets better because you're bathing things in ketones now and you're moving crystals around and you're gonna get flare-ups. So keep, they say, keep that medication handy just in case you have a flare-up. And they might be right. They might be right. Even though some of their patients are coming in with gout and giving them information, we don't know the time frame. We don't know. You know I haven't seen any testimonials from the actual patient um, on what they actually did a day in the life of what they're eating when and what they've stayed away from and how long before, you know, after being in the keto um, did they have, they, could they drop their meds permanently? Some unknown questions. So I'm doing a real live testimonial in front of you because I'm a gout sufferer and I'm trying to go through these things. So now I want to see if the purine is actually a problem. Maybe not. It might not be. Even though your body produces way more than you could ever ingest, ingesting more exogenous ones is giving your kidneys and making them work a lot harder. You know, what, what they're already normally handling, maybe when they're functioning better, as you're treating your body better, it's a journey, it takes time. It's one thing to get keto adapted and fat adapted after maybe two months or a few months, um, but it's another thing to get your kidneys functioning better to where you're not having any gout flare-ups and you can handle more higher purine foods. And I'm talking without medication. This is major. With meds is like a false positive. With meds is an, you're artificially lowering things. So I, that's not where I wanna go. I wanna figure this out. And if it's staying away from the dairy and if it's shuffling the starchy carb here and there, maybe like on a weekly on that what you call a cheat day is when you go, that's, you'll probably get away with that. That's what I used to do. And it wasn't really a problem. The rest of most of the time, it was protein and vegetables. And I kind of kept it more low purine, meaning most of it was chicken. I would do a salmon once in a while. Um, what else would I do? I do some white fish, a tilapia here and there. Um, and the red meat, was kind of scattered too, you know, a couple of times a week maybe, or that. So as I've gotten older, we're gonna have to see what's going on. I've done it a couple days in a row now. Um, very lean, high quality, and uh, no dairy. And I'm trying to tweak this thing and come up with like a hybrid anti-inflammatory, call it a diet if you want, or call it a lifestyle, for myself, so I can share with all of yous out there and let you know what's going on, especially the gout sufferers and all. I want to be able to let you know what I'm doing so we know. And it's so weird because it's a tricky little Ricky. You eat something, all of a sudden you feel a little something move around that toe or, or that ankle. And, you know, there's crystals down there. I know. And they're moving. And they're, one went from the right foot to the left side not too long ago. And this and that. As I'm only two months, solid two months now in the keto, right? Um, next week will be solid two months, yeah. So keep moving forward. You don't want to give up too soon or get your, you know, uh, throw in the towel. It's uncomfortable. Like you don't know when you get a major flare up and they got a limp around. If you got to walk a dog and things like that, um, you know, you get pretty upset. <laughs> but if you got some meds on standby or you got your whatever, your Advil or whatever you do from your doctor to get it, keep it calm, while you're going through this process, there you go. Now, I go another month and I'm getting myself keto adapted and all these things and then you know, flare up, start and this and that. It's going to get a little bit like, okay, I got to make some other change. But 
I really think that I'm going down the right road. I like the way my energy was kind of up today. Um, and I found another that super fat snack other than the fat snacks <laughs> uh, because of the dairy. Uh, and I got, also got uh, the Bulletproof guys got those collagen bars, no dairy either. So the collagen protein instead. So there's some things that you can find. And these things are pretty delicious too, which is good. Thank God for that. And, um, you know, also I'm doing the coffee and also I want to see back in the day with the gout, stay away from the caffeine, blah, blah, blah. But now you hear the new school, caffeine helps it. Drink as many cups a day as you want kind of thing. So I want to see if I'm doing that on a daily because I used to not even do that. Oh, computer decided to go night-night again. Oh, hello, computer. Let's get you back online because we're doing Dean Bodie show. Dan it, dan dan, right? Okay. So, you know, back in the day, I did not really do the caffeine much or the coffee much. <clears throat> I kind of use that as a, on a treat day too. I'd go to a Starbucks or whatever and make like a little, you know, it's a Saturday morning. You have your little lemon piece of lemon cake and get your coffee it was nice but i never had it around all the time it wasn't like I had the coffee maker every day and some people can slam the coffee like it's going out of style but i enjoy it i like the mental clarity of it um and the energy from it um which is cool there's nothing wrong with that a lot of benefits there and all that stuff so Again, I hope that it falls into a good lane with me. I'll find a way to get this done when it comes to the purines, when it comes to the starchy carbs and how I'm going to shuffle this thing around. I don't like, uh, and I can use the intermittent fasting uh, from time to time as a tool. I don't like doing it too much in this, you know, waiting so long to eat and all of that or going five, six hours, um, which is fine. But, you know, it's a little bit odd, odd for me. Um, so I got to find a way to get it dialed in where I can get the best of both worlds and pay attention to what's working for me. Avoid the things that are causing the flare ups and, you know, probably not too many days in a row of the problem things. But on you know, a once a week or so, some of the things might, you know, I could, I could handle it. And you just got to pay attention and do it. It was really cool to see the meter reading this morning after the pasta. It kicked me out. I needed to see that. And what is what you what you eat or when you eat it, you'll know. Okay, this is gonna kick me out. But and then you know how to get back on. So what I was trying to, and I'm coming back around the long way. When I had that super fat, right, the no dairy, the little squeeze pouch, um, and uh, then I did the Bodhi walk and all the stuff I did. I came back and I checked it again. Then it was moderate. It went from no ketone back into moderate. So my body kind of went right back in there pretty quick. And it also got slammed out pretty quick and you eat a bunch of pasta. <laughs> Too many starchy carbs, but it was really good. I think it did my body some good to, you know, throw that cheat in there. And we'll get back on track again. And it's it's very tempting for me to just throw all what I've already done the last couple of months out the window. Ah, the keto, forget it. Forget this and that. It's helping me figure things out. It reminded me of the dairy thing again. Um, this morning drink with the apple cider vinegar um, and the lemon what I'm doing now, and uh, first of all, um, the apple cider vinegar and that drink that I do, I make this healthy lemonade, right? And you can either go sparkling water or regular water, okay? Or San, the San Pellegrino I use, a little small bottle, and the rest I'll do regular water. And you'll squeeze the stevia in there. One, I do like one, maybe a little bit, um, of the sque of the ampule, or whatever you want to call it, um, of stevia, you know, organic liquid. I'll do a, a little pinch of pink Himalayan salt. I'll do a little pinch of uh, 
the other kind of salt. It's like an organic salt also. Um, but you can just go the pink Himalayan is enough. And um, the lemon juice, whether you get the organic lemon juice in the little bottles and shake them up and do a little dump of that in there. Or if you got regular lemons, cut them up, get the lemon squeezer. Squeeze, I squeeze two of those in there. And um, what else goes in? I said the apple cider vinegar and the water. Shake it up and that's a healthy lemonade. So what I've been doing first thing in the morning is making a glass, regular water, a little splash of apple cider vinegar. If you want to be cool, say ACV. <laughs> um, a little splash of the lemon juice, organic. A little pinch of the pink Himalayan. I put a little tap, a little dash of turmeric and a little tap and a little dash of cream of tartar for the potassium. So this is a great anti-inflammatory cocktail. So it's kind of like the healthy lemonade, but it's got a little extra little booyah in it. And I'll take a tablespoon and I'll mix it around and I'll just drink that down. So that's playing a role also. Treating my kidneys nicer, getting them functioning better so they can handle the purines better. So all of this that's happening to my body, you can't make a snap decision after just two months. You got to put the time in. You got to give your body a chance to, to recalibrate, rejuvenate, replenish, and all that. And the intermittent fasting, I think, is good. I, I, don't, I could not do it on a daily. It's just not me. But it does. I think it's healthy as a tool whether you're doing it twice a week or even once a week, to get into that between 16 hour and 20 hour window to, for that autophagy, for that cell regeneration, getting out the old uh, bad cells, replacing them with the new and healthy. Major health benefits there. And when the people that fast longer, they start tapping into the brain cells and all this other stuff, I haven't gotten to that level, but you know, we'll try it as a tool once we get better at it and all of that. So, we're doing all this stuff. I hope that you're enjoying this information in Dean Bodie's show. There's more stuff to talk about that's gonna take us in other places. So, let's see what's going on with Dean Bodie. See what's going on. And while we're doing that, hey, Alexa, what's the joke of the day? Today I have a winter joke. Why shouldn't snowmen get angry? If they get too heated, they have a meltdown. <laughs> she comes through. A-L-E-X-A is on point. What a, she makes a good countertop comedian, you know? Not stand-up, not sit-down, but countertop comedian. So, you know, why did can't the snowman get angry? Whatever it is, because they can have a meltdown. I get it. I can relate to that one. Nice going, A-L-E-X-A. So let's see what's going on. I did the butter and the fat. And the oh, yeah. What's with all these comments with the farm fresh, the farm to table, and the vine ripened? Okay. So Pete and Jerry's organic eggs. So now that I can't have Ben and Jerry's ice cream or Ben and Jerry's dairy-free because it's got the sugar, we're not going Ben and Jerry's. We're going Pete and Jerry's organic eggs. See how we did the whole flip -a -roo, the whole replacement, out with the Ben and Jerry. Replace it with organic eggs. Hey, some have some hard-boiled. Sometimes we can scramble them. Sometimes we can do over-medium or an over-easy. I'm more of an over-medium kind of guy where you get a little bit of an ooze because we're not sopping it up with the bread. Not doing that. We don't do the bread, right? So over-medium, you get a little bit and <laughs> you get it dialed in like that. But man, let me tell you, I also found these, um, I wanted to comment on this What's with this uh, farm fresh eggs? Yeah, where else are they coming from, huh? They're coming from the farm. Vine ripened tomatoes. I remember watching uh, Papa John's Pizza and he'd be on there with fresh ingredients, all that talk, and about the vine ripened tomatoes. And where, are the, where are the tomatoes coming from other than the vine? Nowhere, okay? We get it. Vine ripened. Sounds fancier? It's not. We know they come from the vine. So farm to table, okay. That's if you like live on a farm and you're walking it from the cow right into the kitchen. There's no other way it's farm to table, okay? So for you farmers out there, nice going by the way. 
Uh, let me tell you, this is funny stuff, but um, I found these coconut wraps. I got them from the Thrive Market. Made from coconut meat, coconut oil, coconut whatever. And they come in in a box and they're covered in like wrap and they're flat. And you make, I made these scrambled eggs the other day, put them inside a coconut wrap, rolled them up like a burrito, and they kind of stick together like a, um, like a, what do you call it? Like a, uh, like a spring roll, right? But it's a coconut wrap with egg inside. And then in the pan with the avocado oil or the coconut oil spray, I put the thing on there, so I gave it a little bit of brown on both sides, and I had myself a little scrambly egg burrito, coconut wrap style. Yes, they were good. See, I found another one. I didn't know how that was gonna go, or if they were gonna be any good, but nice going. And I think I read right, they, they last like 10 months up in your cupboard. The longevity is good also. So, but you can make that burrito out of other things too, obviously. And I could have put some avocado in there. I could have maybe spread a little bit of that almond cheese inside, which would like substitute a sour cream or something. You see where I'm going with this? It's kind of fun when you find things because the world is different now. A lot of people are doing these kinds of lifestyles and companies are making a lot of these kinds of products um, for us to enjoy. Oh yeah, so... Um, and in the other ones, the other normal stuff, you save that for a cheat day, you know, on your weekly or your bi-weekly, however you feel it's going to work for you and look forward to that when you dive in and, uh, you know, eat something where you have to look for the nearest bathroom, <laughs> okay? So let's see what's going on, Dean Bodie. And, uh, oh my gosh, anyway. All right, so that's kind of funny. We did the joke of the day, the ACV. Oh, we did that too. Wow. It's like, oh, I was talking about the ACV drink, the apple cider vinegar drink in the morning, how it's good for your kidney. But if you make it too strong, not so good feeling on the belly, on the empty stomach, you know? And um, <laughs> uh, and I got this flash briefing. Oh, yeah. Me, thermometer, sauce. All right. Chicken legs. Oh, my goodness. A L E X A. Asked me the other day if I wanted to have this flash briefing. Meaning, after I say good morning and she gives me a good morning and tells me it's, uh, oh, I don't know, coffee day or something and goes into the reason what it was somebody's birthday or you know how it goes. Then she goes, because I said yes to the flash briefing, I wish I didn't because I can't get it turned off now. So now every morning after the good morning, and she tells me something cool, I gotta deal with the flash briefing. And what is it? It's a, it's a Fox News, they get right into the whole coronavirus and how many cases, right off the bat, with the bad news. So before that happens, after the good morning announcement, I just tell her to shut it down <laughs> because I don't need to hear this new variant and now this, we got this and we got that. Now, what is it now? Does it have just red tentacles and maybe one blue one sticking out the right side? Take care of yourself. Keep your immune system strong so you can take care of somebody else. And when that thing comes flying around, it doesn't like strong immune systems and it moves on to the next. That's where you're at. That's where you got to be at. So um, other than that, we made some great chicken legs the other day and the meat thermometer thing was pretty funny. Um, wow. The chicken legs, I got the organic chicken legs. And you put them in the oven, and I think it was, I don't know, at 425 for like 40 minutes. And at 30 minutes, you turn them. Man, they came out perfect. And these are like big kind of drumettes, like a, call them like a big chicken wing without the wing part. And it's, they're bad to the bone and good. And the skin, no problem, all keto friendly. It's actually good fats right there. So you season them up real nice, and that's a good thing. And I did my cooking bag with the roast. When I was in college, these cooking bags, when I found these cooking bags, it was a game changer. And you put the roast in there, and I threw some onions, I threw some carrot, I threw some celery in there, and you put the slits inside the bag, and it's very forgiving too. And all the juices get in the bag too, 
if you wanted to use those, we made it make it, you can make a gravy out of it or whatever. I didn't, or pour some of that, bring that that sauce to a boil, thicken it with some arrowroot or something, and put that on top of the meat. Is forget about it, man. So the cooking bag was awesome. Welcome back. When you're doing this kind of thing and you're cooking for yourself and all that, it's just good practice preparing things. You know exactly what's in it. And uh, we're figuring it out as we're, we're doing our thing over here and, uh, you know, how we're doing it with the cooking bag and all of that, the drumsticks. And I had a funny thing happen with the meat thermometer <laughs> on the, the roast. I kind of I overcooked it. But the meat thermometer, I took it out. And it wasn't where I wanted it to be, like a 145 right in there. It says something like that uh, for the medium, medium. Yeah, but the, it was about medium or medium, maybe medium rare. And uh, it was on Celsius, not, not Fahrenheit. And I kept it in there and the number was lower and I screwed up. And I realized I had to hit the other button uh, for the Fahrenheit. And uh, hey, we learned that for the next time I made the roast and it came out very delicioso. So, hey, listen, um, I'm having fun going down this thing today. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. And, um, you know, I think we're pretty much dialed in here. And uh, Bodie and I are having a great day today. Oh, yeah. So we did the sunset and the sunrise. Now, Bodie and I were playing great, playing with the soccer ball. She's got some fancy footwork, man, like nobody's business. And she kind of shows off in front of me, kicks it around back and forth. She does a little spin on top and flips it around. And she hits it with both feet, grabs it with her mouth, and then runs towards me with the ball. I'm getting all choked up because I love her so much and she's so adorable. And we played with the rope today. Man, is she strong. She is a strong little girl. And I could pull that rope as hard as I can. And she's actually not just hanging on, but she's pulling back. And to the point where she ends up winning the tug of war because she can hang in there longer than me. So Bodie's feeling strong. We're still dealing with a little uh, folliculitis with her. The doggy dermatologist is next, is in March. We're going to get it specifically dialed in. Just like we're going to specifically dial it in with me. And once I put a little more time in, I don't know, maybe another few months, then we're going to go get some lab work done. Let's see where I'm at with my cortisol levels. Check with my adrenals. We're going to see the other full labs. Let's see what's going on. But I don't want to do it too soon because then you get the labs where, you, you know, they're not really where they should be. And then you are going to watch out. The medical doctor wants to write you seven more scripts. Not doing it. <laughs> okay, so let's treat this body right. Let's give it time to heal. Let's build up some momentum because the body continues to heal and function better. Let's put the body in an environment so it can heal, fix, and repair itself. Let's treat the body better. Let's get this kidney and liver working better. Let's get the brain so it can talk to the rest of the body all dialed in and make everybody a lot happier. Because even with the body, just like people, communication is everything. Hey, Millie. Yeah. You hear what he said? He's saying a lot of good stuff today with all that stuff. <laughs> it was funny when he talked about what's going on with divine ripened tomatoes. I mean, what else are they coming from, right? I know, that was funny. I, I was thinking the same thing. Of course they're coming from the vine. So listen, let's make it a great weekend. And uh, man, next weekend is Super Bowl. I'm fired up about it, big time. And uh, we're coming at you with the Dean Bodie Show. Click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. If you like what's going on over here, you're enjoying the show, hey, consider subscribing. Ring that notification bell. You don't want to miss any of these shows. Why? Because these are real shows. This is Dean Bodie Show. We're coming at you daily. Sometimes bi-daily, tri-daily, or quad-daily. Or maybe we're coming at you weekly. We're definitely coming at you bi-weekly, or maybe sometimes a quad-weekly. We make up our own words around here. And sometimes maybe, uh, let's say it's every fourth day, that means we're coming at you twice a week. And you're like, what do you, what do you mean twice? There's only seven days in the week, Dean Bodie. What are you, a crazy person? Hey, well, listen, in the Dean Bodie calendar, the week is eight days. We do the Dean Bodie show. Dean Bodie's calendar is different than the, the normal calendar. So if we go quad weekly, that's twice a week on the Dean Bodie calendar. Hey, we might be cranking it up a notch 
and we might have a run where we're doing daily again, Dean Bodie Show. But this is how we're doing it now. We're doing our thing. We're trying to keep it dialed in. We want to give you a great show and do our thing over here, right? So that being said, zippity doo da, zippity a, my oh my, what a glorious day! There's plenty of sunshine coming away. Zippity doo da. Zippity yay. Oh yeah. So listen, have a great day, <laughs> rest of your weekend. Make it a great weekend. Remember, take care of yourself so you can take care of somebody else. Keep your immune system strong. Keep moving forward. And don't let anybody take your joy away. Bodhi's my joy vitamin. Bodhi brings me joy on a on a regular basis throughout the day. I'm passing it on to you. Okay, take the joy, hold it tight in your hand, and you pass it forward to somebody else. How's that sound as your homework assignment from Dean Bodie? We're going to talk to you soon. Make it a great rest of your weekend. Have an awesome day. DeanBodie.com. Oh, yeah. Now, also, remember, before I do the oh, yeah, I caught myself because on the podcast, a five-star rating and a nice review would be nice. If you got a minute, jump over there and do it. Give the algorithm a good uppercut and send it to a whatever. Share the um, Dean Bodie Show YouTube channel with with a friend. They need a break in the day. Dean Bodie Show's a good break in the day. Let's do the jazz version before we leave. She's the good girl Bodie. She's the best girl in the world. Yeah, the good girl Bodie. Yeah, the best girl in the world. Oh, yeah. We do these things. I got the fireplace behind me again. What we did notice... Uh, on the YouTube, we do these kind of special beach scenes or ocean waves, these ultra 4K. You can find them on there. Just look it up in the search and you'll, you can be by the beach in your living room or wherever you got it. And it's got the atmosphere and you play your background music. Some of them come with the music, but I do the own music either from A-L-E-X-A or from my sound doc, my Bose sound doc with my old phone in it and play music in the background. But what I noticed is the sunset videos are a lot longer, most of them. Eight hour, 10 hour. The sunrise, an hour, summer 30 minutes. Because nobody wants to get up early. <laughs> when I lived on the west coast of Florida, watching the sunset come down was a lot easier than when I lived on the Fort Lauderdale side, Miami side, uh, getting up, at, you have to get up at like five in the morning to catch the sunrise on the other side. A little more difficult. Yes, it can be done and they're both equally beautiful, but I'm understanding what's going on with the YouTube. Even the guys with the cameras got to get out there. They're like, listen, we'll do the sunsets. It's a lot easier with their glass of wine, chilling out rather than getting up early with their hangover, trying to do the sunrise. All right, you guys. Have an awesome day. Thanks for watching Dean Bodie Show. We love you from Dean Bodie. Take care of yourself, okay? Stay strong, and um, we're not going nowhere. No one's stopping Dean Bodie. Have an awesome rest of your day. DeanBodie.com. Oh, yeah.